Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Getting Started with Dwarf Fortress, the tutorial series for new players with me, the Mutual Mouse. So after the last disaster uh, of a fort, I have built up to a level where about the same stage that we were. I've done some other things. Um, if there's some things you don't understand, don't worry, we will get into everything eventually. Uh, but I'm at a place now where I would like to start doing some things uh, that I do in every fort. Uh, and I thought, well, I might as well bring everyone in and teach you a little bit about uh, the use of nobles and noble roles. So nobles, which we can get to by hitting N, by the way, uh, the nobles and administration uh, of our fort. There are some nobility roles that you can get in Dwarf Fortress. Uh, some of them you always have, and some of them you can get by special decree from the mountain home, depending on how many holdings you have, etc., etc. So that basically means that the more prosperous and amazing your fort becomes, uh, you will get special nobles like lords and barons and Dutch dukes and everything. But. Aside from the pure noble nobles, who are just um, jackasses, who demand things and decree things and tell you to do things and have tantrums if you don't, we have some other nobles who actually fill a purpose. We have looked briefly at one of these earlier when we did trade. Because to trade, we need a broker. So to uh, in the last fort we did, we set up a broker we looked at the one with the relevant skill and we found the one who was an adequate appraiser because that is the important feature you want for your broker, his ability to appraise goods. Uh, there's another thing that you will get from that if we just go all the way out and I hit uh, the set key. We will see here that the created wealth, you will need a broker with the appraiser skill. Trade information, we will need a broker information with the appraiser skill. So once we have a broker, uh, we will also get the approximate value of our fort, of all the things we've made uh, in here. So we will quickly just do that now by going in here and setting a broker. This guy, go back, and then we hit set again. And here we see, yep, the created wealth is 36,100 dwarf bucks, uh, question mark. We have other objects, like this is the distributed um, breakdown of this number and then we have imported wealth like everything we brought with us uh, and exported wealth we haven't really exported anything uh, there's been a couple of merchants here I haven't interacted with any of them but they might have brought a or taken a drink while they were here and then brought the drink with them so that counts then as our exported wealth but you'll also notice that we get a question mark behind each of these and that is because this is an approximation. There is a other noble position called the bookkeeper. And he has, you'll see, there says settings here. No one has settings except the bookkeeper. So if we go to the bookkeeper and we hit S, we'll see here, lowest precision, low precision, medium precision, etc. Uh, and this is how accurate will your bookkeeper be? Uh, the more accurate he needs to be, the more time he will spend in the office. Um, I usually set it to highest precision because I like everything to be completely accurate. And it's, to be honest, I don't feel it takes that much work for him anyway. And when you get enough dwarves, there'll always you could have a dedicated bookkeeper. Like that could be all he does is keep books. But we also need to assign him then, and we will go down. And we, the first one we hit is the most relevant. We have an adept record keeper. Uh, I believe that is better. Yeah, we have an adept, uh, adept record keeper from one of our latest migrant waves. So that's nice. We'll keep that guy or her, whatever. It's hard to tell. And you see that uh, the require says over here lights up in red. And that is because he requires things. If I hit enter, it'll says his holdings, he doesn't have an office and he needs at least a meager office. So that means we need to make and assign to him an office for him to work in. Like the broker didn't need anything and the expedition leader doesn't require anything. 
but the broker, uh, the bookkeeper does. So the way to build an office for the bookkeeper then uh, is to take any room and you place a chair and a table in it. Well, technically just a chair, but you would like to have the table where he needs to sit and work. So I have a room here, three by three room. In the middle we have a, a Gabor table and we have a Gabor throne, which is the stone version of a chair. And I hover over the chair and we see it says R, make throne or study. By the way, I'm using Q for this, the uh, interact, what's it called? Okay, set building task or preferences, Q. And then I hit R and the room starts to flash. Uh, if this was a bigger room, I could uh, expand it uh, and, uh, and or uh, expand it or si uh, resize it. But this is a good size. It takes the entire room because it's small and it's enclosed by a door. So it knows that this will be the room. I just hit enter. Now this has become a study, uh, which is the same as an office. And I can hit A to assign, uh, let's see, A, and then I use the plus and minus key to navigate this list. Uh, and it was Moses, I believe, who was now the broker, no, bookkeeper, sorry. So I hit enter. And there's a special feature now for DF hack, where I can hit one, say over here, to auto allocate to my bookkeeper. So that basically means that if I later on change, if this person dies, or if I get someone who's better and decide to reassign this job, auto, uh, um, auto allocate for IDF hack would fix that for me. So I wouldn't have to go and reassign this office because this is a personal assignment. Like this dwarf, you own this office now. And if I change the roles, then I would have to reassign it. But DF hack can do that for me. So do that. And it's, it will take a little bit of time and these numbers will change. Um, the dwarf will come do all the counting that it needs to do and we will get accurate counts. Shush dog. The dog is hearing the kids playing outside and going bonkers because she wants to be outside as well. So now we see the uh, bookkeeping dwarf is here. It's like this little um, sprite here uh, with the scroll that in uh, this is a special uh, sprite that you get for nobles. They look like this. You will see this is obviously a hunter and You are a metalsmith. So there's special little uh, sprites for all the dwarves, but this one Regardless of his profession. He will have this now because he's noble Please excuse the annoying dog in the background um, But that uh, is gonna be it for this episode of getting started with dwarf fortress. We looked at the noble position assigned a broker like we had the last time we fulfilled a requirement for our bookkeeper who needs an office we see that require is now yellow and if we go in here he has a modest office modest is better than meager which is why it counts um, higher ranking nobles will require higher ranking uh, holdings uh, some might specify particular rooms they want they might particular furniture like how many chests how many cabinets, how many statues or armor stands would they like. And it's all up to the particular noble. Um, there is another noble who will require an office and that is the manager, but we're going to look particularly at the manager in the next episode, where I will make a manager, give him an office and we will see what we can do with the manager and why you would want to have a manager uh, as soon as possible. See you in the next one.